I'm Alice Lorch. I'm the program director for the Harvard Ophthalmology Residency Program, and I'm here today with Eric Geyer, who is a physician scientist and pediatric neuro-ophthalmologist on our faculty um, through Boston Children's Hospital. Dr. Geyer I have known for a long time because he graduated from not only our residency program, but two of our fellowships, and he's been working as a research advisor for the residents. Um, and we're here today to talk about how we think about research for the Harvard Ophthalmology Residency. Thank you so much for joining me today in this conversation about research in our program. I have had a lot of fun over the last couple of years thinking with you about our current research program for our residents and the things that we can do to strengthen that. And I wanted to really share that in some detail with the medical students that are thinking about our program. Um, and I thought this would be a fun um, way for us to do that. So before we get into the details of the program and the things that we've been investing in, can you tell the students a little bit about your research background? Yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks, for, thanks for having me here. So uh, I came to the residency program at Mass Sinear with a background in uh, neuroscience and the intent to form my own neuroscience lab following my clinical training. It's very difficult to do basic science and bench work in particular during, uh, during residency, and especially since my wife and I at the time had just had our first child. So I focused really on a number of clinical research projects in neuro-ophthalmology, which was my interest. And as I progressed through my clinical training, I identified amblyopia as the ideal target of my research career. And so I reached out to faculty involved in amblyopia research to establish mentorship relationships and to outline future projects. And it was really through Dr. David Hunter, who's the ophthalmologist in chief at Boston Children's Hospital, who's a prominent amblyopia researcher, that I was able to connect with my current research mentor, Mark Baer, who is at MIT. And I'm now in my second year of an NIH funded K08 award, which is a clinician scientist career development award that protects 80% of my time to do this research at MIT. Um, and I spend the rest of my time seeing pediatric neuro-ophthalmology patients as a faculty member at Boston Children's Hospital. Yeah, so when you were a resident, it sounds like you were able to find some good mentors who have continued to be your mentors. And can you tell us a little bit more about how you identified those people and the availability of, of mentors for research at Mass Ioneer? Absolutely. So uh, as residents, we spend a lot of time working with so many different faculty. Um, and although Mass Ioneer is a big place with lots of different faculty, it doesn't take long to get to know who's doing what, um, both the clinical and the research interests of all the faculty there. And I was really impressed with how receptive every faculty member was who I approached um, uh, and how, how they were willing to work with residents on research projects that interested them. Uh, as in my case, faculty were really supportive of, of my career development as well um, and, and enabling the research, us as residents to reach our research goals. So I also benefited from referrals by many faculty to meet uh, other leaders in the field, even across institutions. Yeah. Uh, it's also worth mentioning that career mentors don't necessarily have to be in the same subspecialty field. So some of the more fruitful and longstanding mentorship relationships that I've had have been with physician scientists outside of my specific focus. Yeah, I think that really well describes the culture of research that we're trying to promote. Yeah. So, Alice, you reached out to me when you started as program director wanting to strengthen and formalize a research program. Can you tell me about the program as it stands now? Yeah. Um, so you know a lot about it. So for the benefit of the medical students, I think we're going to start at the beginning and the foundations of, of research. So certainly Mass Ioneer is a place that's steeped in research. Our faculty are all involved in, in some sort of research, but certainly on a, with a variety of time commitment and sort of a variety of different kinds of research. Um, and for a long time, the program has seen this as something important. Um, certainly, we, we say that residency is a time to really hone and perfect your clinical skills and become a, a true, um, a strong clinician um, surgeon. But we do like to have people, to give people experience with research during their time here. Um, so the program has supported residents financially for a long time. They are, um, they, if residents have research that they want to present, they have, there's funds to be able to go to conferences to do that. Um, and there's protected time also to travel to those conferences. So our residents often go to ARVO, to academy, to subspecialty conferences, sort of depending on their subspecialty interests or what they want to train in. Um, we have also formalized a, a research experience during, during residency. So we have the biannual residence course. And during that, our intermediate and senior residents all work directly with a faculty member to write a review paper. 
Um, and that way we ensure that all residents have the opportunity to publish something um, upon during their time um, in our residency. And usually it's just one of the many things that our residents publish, but I think that's something that um, that really is found foundational to, to residency research experience, a way that you have an automatic time to work with a mentor. And it culminates in a really nice conference where there's invited um, visiting professors and then there's a large dinner and it's really a celebration of the work that the residents have done. Beyond that, we have an annual research award um, that started a couple of years ago called the Gagudis Folk Folkman Award. Um, and it provides up to $20,000 for one resident per residency class. It's selected due to the research they've done in the past and their research interests to support their research during their um, time. So there's, you know, we always have residents who have a really particular um, interest and background and want to dive deeper into research. And that's a, an opportunity for them to be financially supported to do that um, and to, to really be able to, to build their um, portfolio as a resident. Um, so those are things, that's sort of where things stood, I think, when I became program director. There's, there's clearly been a really long-standing tradition of research. Um, but when I reached out to you, there were, I wanted to really think creatively about ways that we could support residents more. Our residents are so creative. Um, they are so interested in, in, in research and have all sorts of different ideas. But it's very difficult to, to balance the challenges of clinical work and the responsibilities of residency um, with spending time in research. And so I wanted to think more critically about that and how could we make it easier, facilitate it, and support people in doing that. A couple of things that I think we've come up with that have been um, successful. One is we have a senior elective that we use um, for a part of the time is where our residents go to Aravind. So they have an opportunity to do a global elective, but they now have time during that um, elective as well to work on research. So there's a sort of protected chunk of time um, we started with that, but realized that it's a little bit too late at the end of your residency and your senior year to be doing research that you really need to start earlier and perhaps be using that time to pull things together. And so this year, for the first time, we've looked at the schedule holistically and put research blocks in or chunks of time into all of the different rotations that are blocked off so that residents from the very beginning can be starting on research projects and have some blocks of time throughout their training culminating in this elective block senior year. So I think that's a way that we've sort of ensured that there, there's some protected time for our residents to be involved. Um, we enlisted you as our, as our research advisor, and I think, you know, you, you and I have started to think about how do we make sure that there is a, a research mentorship relationship that maybe starts with you, but that then you can be that person who facilitates the faculty connections and, you know, bringing people who are interested in basic science projects towards the faculty who are doing that, people who are interested more in epidemiology towards the faculty who are doing that, Sort of depending on the interest of the research and formalizing that a little bit. Um, and I think one of the most fun things for me that we have done um, this year for the first time was having our um, faculty showcase of their research for our residents to learn more about it. Um, and so I'm going to turn it over to you to tell us more about that, about sort of how the concept came up and, and how it turned out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thanks. And that was such a, a great project to work with you on. Um, so uh, for the first time this year, we hosted a showcase of faculty and the research projects that, that are available for residents uh, to participate in. Um, so almost every subspecialty was represented among the more than dozen faculty that attended this, uh, this uh, meeting. Uh, each faculty member gave about a three to five minute um, elevator pitch of sorts about their project to the residents. And then the residents could then in turn reach out to the specific faculty members who are conducting that research in areas that interested them. We had really excellent feedback um, across the board on this event and we're looking forward to continuing it next year. Yeah, I thought it was really fun to have that sort of um, turning the tables of having the faculty pitching ideas to the residents. Um, <laughs> is not the way that sort of the relationship always works. And I think that it was sort of a fun concept. And I, my feedback I got from both sides was the faculty enjoyed it, are looking forward to working with the residents. And for the residents, it was eye-opening as to what opportunities are out there. So yeah. um, do you have any final thoughts for us about sort of what you would say to medical students and as they think about looking for research opportunities um, in residency and sort of what, what is available, what opportunities are there at Mass Ioneer? Yeah, absolutely. So um, it's important to keep in mind that residency uh, is a time for clinical training. It's, it's the time that we have to dedicate to making ourselves, ourselves the, the best clinicians that we can be. Um, and that said, at the same time, uh, it's worth noting that Mass Ioneer is the type of place where 
there are really extensive opportunities um, uh, really owing to the breadth of faculty and interest in, in the diversity of faculty that, that we have who are conducting research uh, for residents to participate and drive research projects, make connections in their fields, uh, and build their careers as uh, uh, academic ophthalmologists and scientists moving forward. So um, it's, it's really remarkable how supportive the program leadership is, and I'm so pleased that you're continuing this trend as Program Director Alice. Thank you. Yep. Well, we've been, I've enjoyed working on it with you, and thanks for joining us today. Yeah, thank you.